What's up everyone, Anel here. So by now you know the deal. We're going to be continuing with the tier list and discussing the blades ranked 21 through 30. If you want to know what this is about and how these blades are ranked, please watch the previous parts that I will put in the description below and I will explain everything. Otherwise we're going to be continuing with the C tier blades and then getting right into B tier. I didn't write most of the pros and cons for these blades today, so if the type of included information or wording seems different, then that would be why. But I don't want to waste any more time, so let's jump right into it. So coming in at number 30, we have Shiva. So Shiva is a pretty interesting blade in the first cannon on our list, and in some situations, she can deal a lot of damage. But the nature of her kit and how it interacts with challenge mode is ultimately why she's placed this low on the list. On paper, she's a blade who can reach very high sources of additive damage, up to 333% by collecting gold, and up to 120% with the bonus of female drivers and blades. She additionally has three aux core slots, so her damage can be even further increased on top of that. She can reach some of the highest art damage and base special damage in the game thanks to the power of all these sources of additive damage, which can be very nice, and the effects of her level 1 and 2 special are both very strong to increase her damage even further. Her level 3 also drops gold so she can get access to her higher damage additives. So what's the problem? Well for one, in challenge mode her level 3 doesn't actually even drop gold so she can't access the biggest source of her damage, and number two, to access the other source of damage you have to specifically tailor your party around her passive. A third major issue is that all her specials are sink or hit, making her by far the weakest of all the cannons and chain attacks. All three of the other cannons are absolutely incredible there and have much easier additives to access and use, and mostly just outclass Shiva in every way. Shiva does get one small bonus in the wave format of challenge mode, that being her level 3 having some of the highest range in the game, but that's a very small consolation prize for basically losing your best source of damage. Even outside of challenge mode, her low hit count specials typically render her ineffective on normal and low defenses are a bane of bringer of chaos. And in challenge mode, her kit is pretty weak and mediocre and all in all it makes Shiva the weakest cannon and not really a great contender to consider using. At 29, we get to the next katana blade on this list with Theory. As a tank blade, Theory has quite a bit more going for her in terms of skill set and utility. Being a katana, she has a solid critical rate and has 50% additional damage as an additive if enemies are targeting her. She can reach some of the better damage for a tank blade. Her level 3 has a very powerful damaging effect with critical damage and this allows her to get aggro more easily. Some specific bonuses to her include 70% default break resistance so the chance of her ever getting driver comboed is very low. This allows her to constantly be doing something and as usual with katana class weapons, she also has access to an evasion art on every driver to dodge dangerous attacks. Driver combo access is strong and her other specials are pretty strong in this aspect as well. However, her damage with only a 50% additive and 2 aux core slots will still be relatively low, and her skill tree additive only works if she can get aggro in the first place. And while her damage in specials is much higher than many tanks and hammers, it's still not enough to guarantee that she'll be able to effectively gain aggro to do her job as a tank. Counter spike damage is pretty weak and ineffective, so that skill is mostly useless. Overall, Theory is a pretty middle of the pack blade as both a tank and a damage dealer, and as such she gets pretty easily outclassed by better options, but she can still function fine for what tools she does have. And next up on this list, we move right into her sister. I promise you this was not planned, but it actually just ended up working out like that. So Praxis is a similar case to Theory. She's decent all around, but mostly outclassed by blades ranked higher than her. She's actually got some really strong battle skills, gaining an entire 100% additive damage and 50% accuracy at max affinity to ensure that she'll basically never miss attacks. Her last skill gets her another 60% additive damage if she's above 90% HP. And given how strong the critical rate of lances are, this should be pretty easy to keep up with critical healing. She can reach an additive damage total of 160% very easily because of this, which gives her a solid damage output as an attacking blade. Additionally, most of her specials are pretty fast and can hit hard with these bonuses. Her level 3 and 4 specials have strong effects on them to increase her damage output and potential further. She has access to a fast smash on Morag and a decent break art on Rex for decent driver combo coverage. Her one weakness as an attacker is a single aux core slot, but since she never has to run night vision, this isn't really a major deal. So why is she ranked this low? Well, many attack blades also have good sources of additive damage, and while she has a lot of good things going for her as a blade, she doesn't really have any exceptional quality. She actually has the lowest damage output of lances when additives are maxed out, and her specials have generally low hit counts and AoE, making her one of the least useful attack blades for general purposes. The main problem with Praxis is that there are just so many other attack blades who outclass her in many notable ways, and as such, it's hard to justify using her over better options. At 27, we get to the last of the katana blades with Newt. So Newt has no damage additives and two aux core slots, so her damage is pretty much as low as Aegeon's as a katana blade. 
but katanas typically have somewhat okay damage thanks to their critical rate, but even then there's not going to be enough to reliably gain aggro and function as a tank. So why is Newt ranked so much higher than Aegean and higher than the other katanas? Well, she's got a decent aura for allies, for one thing. Last line of defense is a very good ability that affects party members and reduces their incoming damage by 40%. From testing, this seemingly only affects physical attacks, but regardless this is still a very good ability for defensive-minded teams or for teams struggling with high damage output of enemies. It only works within 5 meters, so make sure you're standing close to enemies if you're trying to take advantage of this. In addition to this party buff, she basically has a better version of Theory's Break Resist passive where Tranquil Guard prevents reactions to all driver combos 70% of the time, no matter what source. This gives her some utility as a tank besides just damage reduction. She's got the strongest face tanking ability of the Katana Blades, and still has access to an evasion art on every driver to dodge any dangerous attacks. And as always, she has access to a decent smash art on Morag. Now she isn't without her weaknesses. She'll struggle to gain aggro with her lower damage and weak specials. And as you've probably heard me say many times, if she can't get aggro, she isn't doing her job as a tank. Auto attack aggro isn't really meaningful when auto attacks don't really do any damage anyway. As usual, Newt struggles a lot with issues that plague many members of the tank class, which is a lack of reliable damage, but overall, her party-wide passive can at least make the rest of the party tanky, and that's pretty good on higher difficulties. And since we love Blades thinking of party-wide damage reduction at max affinity, here we have Gorg. So in addition to being a JoJo character, Gorg is one of the tankiest attack blades in the game and spreads that tankiness to his allies. Gorg's FTL ability reduces all party-wide damage taken by 20%, and there's no distance restriction on it. This makes it slightly more reliable than the Newt passive, and Gorg is a bit better as a blade outside of that. Being an Axe-class blade, he can infinite arc cancel on Zeke, and also has a critical recharge art for decent damage, and can hit the rare aquatic enemy even harder for 80% more damage. His damage reduction can help the party out in a number of ways, and if you run some crazy setup with Newt and Poppy Alpha, you're probably never going to actually die. He also gets access to a pretty good topple art on Zeke, which can combo into an art that does extra damage on toppled enemies. But despite all of this, Gorg is still one of the weaker attack blades when it comes to actual damage, having some pretty bad specials as far as damage, hit counts, and effects, and his additive is almost never going to apply. And this leaves him with just two Onx Core slots to try to patch that up, and most of the time he's not really going to be doing much of anything. And while his damage reduction can help more offensive blades become tankier, it's typically not going to be useful over evasion party setups that just never get hit to begin with. Overall, Gork has some decent utility and middle-of-the-pack damage as a blade, and these things are enough to rank him right in the middle of every blade, but just outside of the top 25. At least he has a really awesome design. Moving into the top 25 and rounding out the C-tier blades, we have Veil. Veil can reach some of the highest sources of additive damage in the game with her 3 aux core slots, stacking 300% additive from using specials, 100% extra damage from the side, and even an additional 150% damage against launched enemies. She gets the same access to a strong smash out on Morag and break on Rex's other lances, and her specials are decently powerful as well. And while all of that sounds great in theory and potentially give her some absolutely crazy damage numbers, it isn't actually going to be that effective, which is why Veil is in a super great bleed. For one, her 300% additive from using specials requires 6 specials to get to the max number, which can take a bit of time, and also take away from damage you could be doing in the meantime. And if you swap her out, it completely resets. This also applies to rounds of a chain attack, which makes her not a great option there, especially since her specials have relatively low hit counts compared to some of the top tier blades. The fact that her main additive resets can be a big issue though, especially with how long it takes to stack. Void Lance also requires dealing damage from the side, AI usually can't take advantage of these positional additives, and if your player controlling Veil, it likely would not be wrong to assume that you would have aggro, which means that enemies will always be facing you, so that ability isn't going to be very useful either. And I don't think I need to explain why damage against launched enemies isn't really the most useful source of damage. Overall, the conditionals on her sources of damage make Veil not a great option unless you plan on using her for an extended fight, and even then she is likely outclassed by fighting quite a few other attack blades as far as damage. And now, starting with number 24, we finally get to B tier. These blades are typically pretty solid blades you can function well in teams that have pretty strong specific reasons to use. These blades are approaching some of the strongest blades in the game in total strength. First up, we have Agate. Agate has some pretty decent additional damage to insect enemies, and gets increased damage to toppled enemies, which synergizes pretty well with her topple art and topple damage up art on Zeke. She has a pretty strong critical damage level 3 special and access to critical damage bonus as a weapon effect with the Tachyon chip. And while those two additives I discussed can be situationally useful, they aren't really going to be enough to make her a super strong blade. What she does have going for her is that pretty decent ability to increase all party-wide damage by 50% at max affinity. This kind of damage increasing support skill can help blades with lower additives, and also applies to her at all times, which can effectively increase total party damage and make fights go a bit quicker. This kind of strong support ability is enough to put Agate into B tier. 
although Agate is probably still the weakest blade in the tier for a few reasons. Her specials are slow and have fairly low hit counts and are kinda weak outside of her level 3. Her additive damage is even more situational than Veil, and Insects are a pretty uncommon enemy type. Her two aux core slots mean she relies a lot on just the 50% additive at max affinity, and functions more as a support blade than a strong attack blade by her own merits. Perhaps the biggest thing that really hurts Agate though, is the existence of Dagas. Dagas also gets a party wide additive and that one puts Agate to shame, and completely overshadows her. It also comes with an AoE increase, and considering Dagas is an even stronger axe and other strong attacking earth blades also exist, Agate is pretty outclassed and overshadowed as a blade. The next blade we have is Sever. Sever is one of the better tank class blades in the game from a damage output standpoint thanks to the powerful Knuckles skill set and the fact that he always ignores the defense and guard rates of enemies. His arts have fast animations and high ratios and he has strong access to driver combos depending on the driver he is used on. His 400% surprise damage additive can lead to some pretty silly damage cap instant art hits, but this admittedly isn't too useful in many practical scenarios. He has some of the fastest and best specials in the entire game. His level 1 is only one hit, but is very powerful and very fast with critical damage as an effect, which can lead to some very good fusion combos. His level 2 has one of the highest hit counts for a level 2 special, and since it always ignores defense and guard rate, it is very powerful special for chain attacking. His damage is strong enough that he can function pretty well as a tank, gaining a reliable amount of aggro and doing decent enough damage to always remain relevant. His main weaknesses as a blade would be his damage becoming weaker the less defense or guard rate an enemy has, since he doesn't really have any additive damage and only has two aux core slots. His level 3 special also overlaps the battle skill he already has in a skill tree, which is kinda dumb. But overall he has a very solid kit and respectable damage and some decent niche uses for chain attacks and fusion combos. His solidness all around is enough to easily make him a relevant blade who can be used in a number of useful situations. The next blade we have on our list is the second form of Poppy. And while there are a lot of strong customization options for Cutie that are worth rating her this high for, she does have the problem of being fairly overshadowed by Cutie Pie. Her first perk is giving Tora a smash heart so he has full access to all stages of the driver combo and she can be built to function okay as both an attack and a tank blade. Her specials and driver arts all have a decent amount of AoE so she has an easier time than most at clearing mobs. She has an evasion art at a pretty low cooldown and scatter shot allowing her to easily dodge dangerous attacks. Four skill ram slots also mean she gets access to a lot of strong accessory effects and more aux cores than any of the non poppy blades. She can even function as a fantastic support for Cutie Pie, stacking stat boosters, Hunter's Chemistry, and a number of other useful support options. She can also add some additional damage to chain attacks by using Scatter Shot and then immediately starting a chain attack and swapping to Cutie Pie. The projectiles will all use Cutie Pie stats and damage boost, but this method has been nerfed in recent patches by the accuracy not letting many of the attacks hit anymore. As far as the rest of her kit, Counter Spike isn't a very useful source of damage, and her specials are all pretty low hit count. It also doesn't help her that she doesn't really excel in anything, which just leads to her being overshadowed by Cutie Pie even further. And while her customization options allow her to be many different elements and fulfill many roles to change Taurus stats and abilities, her kit itself isn't anything special to be an absolutely fantastic blade. She's got more damage than Alpha but lacks the pure tanking ability, and her damage is heavily outclassed by Cutie Pie. Overall, her best use is unfortunately the same as Alpha, a stat stick for Cutie Pie with occasional driver combo use, and maybe even a vision art use. And now we move on to the last blade for the day. Azami is certainly an interesting case as a blade. She's got basically one or two incredibly powerful uses, and besides that, she's not really good at all. Azami's skill tree gives her more damage on her specials the lower her HP is as a percentage of her total HP. All three of her specials additionally increase damage when Azami is under 30% HP. She can get to max affinity relatively fast thanks to Pain of Longing if you aren't running Hunter's Chemistry for some reason. And then the counter spike damage she has is absolutely useless. So in most normal scenarios you are not going to want to be under 30% HP or really low HP at all. So what does this make a zombie? A pretty low damage cannon with only two aux core slots. Her arts are always low damage and her specials can only be marginally powerful if you lost a little bit of HP before using them. But otherwise she's going to be outclassed not only by all the rare cannons, but probably any random common cannon you pull. And for a while, this was basically what she always was. Before the new game, Plus Drivers did not have a way to live with 1 HP without any bruising of her Bible Pod as one of the two accessory slots, and this made Azami one of the worst blades in the game. Now, New Game Plus is here now, and Drivers can reliably live at 1 HP and now have 3 accessory slots. And if you have 1 HP Exomis, your specials now suddenly hurt a lot. So much that if you use this character in chain attacks, it's incredibly easy to cap all 5 hits of her level 1 and all 10 hits for level 2 and 3. This insanely powerful special damage has given her a lot of use in quick kill chain attack setups, and this one niche has pushed her into being an almost top 20 blade. The amount of damage she is capable of in chain attacks is almost unmatched. 
Her level 1 being AoE is pivotal for the fast kill and fiercest faction, and her higher than average hit count on level 2 is great for a number of other missions and super bosses. She truly has been given a second win by New Game Plus, and has reaped the rewards to become a very situationally useful blade. However, the fact that she's only useful in specific and planned out scenarios and is really weak outside of these niche uses is enough to keep her outside of the top 20. And the third day of this list comes to a close. Be sure to tune in tomorrow as we dive into the top 20. Pretty much every blade from here on out is pretty strong and it's getting harder to find bad things to say about them. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe to my channel, like the video, and share with all your friends because it really does help me out so much. Once again, I'd also like to thank everyone who helped me work on this project, specifically for this video, Aberax, who wrote most of the infographics. Links to all of their stuff is going to be in the description as usual. If you have any input or disagree with this list, feel free to let me know in the comments. With all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something useful, and I hope you all had a wonderful day.